now, 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 Starting, who to give a seat? Dropping the podcast every week. You know the knowledge is elite. After the show, we gon' hold a Lombardi. Celebrating like we throwing a party. This the blueprint, and I know they gon' copy. Cop on my intros, always go the hottest. Cause this is America's game. Hey everybody, welcome back to America's Game, episode number 33. I am your host, Eric Vanek, and you can find me on Twitter at EricVanekNFL. And this week I am joined by the man, the myth, the legend, Mike. Mike, what's <laughs> not, going on, buddy? Not a myth anymore. It's been a few weeks since I've been on America's Game, right? Been a few yeah. weeks. So, yeah. had a bunch of people on, Fizz, you had uh, Christian on for one, you've had Coop on, you've had Adam on. Uh, yep. I'm back, though. I'm back. You're back. We're yeah, fucking back. I, I'm just ready. Let's just skip to the end. Let's do America's favorite game and let's bat. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah, no, we've been uh, tackling the RBs the last couple weeks here. We did RB rankings with Adam. I did a running back warp last week with Koopa. So this week we're going to tackle some of the running back prospects here in the 2024 draft. But before we get to that, might as well talk about you know these free agent signs. Kind of give our quick synopsis of what's happened so far um, with these free agent signs and give our quick take. So um, I'm gonna start with the biggest signing so far um, that's happened, and that was the Dallas Cowboys signing long snapper Trent Seek. What was your thoughts on that one? Oh yeah, man! Finally, Cowboys <laughs> make a free agents move. <laughs> right. uh, uh, did you see that Skip Bayless tweet from a couple days ago? No. All in, comma my ass <laughs> that's the exact tweet and it's a good thing you put that comment otherwise it's just all in my ass <laughs> which would also sum up the cowboys free agency and it would sum up skip bayless quite well too. yes it would <laughs> what shannon sharp would agree to yeah exactly uh, all right so let's tackle them so we'll start with quarterback position here first uh, the big one kirk cousins signing with the atlanta falcons for four years 180 million and I, I don't want to say it's a fucking rocket ship, but that's kind of a rocket ship for Kyle Pitts, Bijan, Drake London. They signed Darnell Mooney, which we'll get to here shortly. What do you think about Cousins, man? So he did have a few things like working against him. Uh, Minnesota always kind of felt like a logical one, but I thought it was going to be a team-friendly deal if he did go back to Minnesota. Uh, I see a lot of Vikings fans happy he's gone, not because Kirk's a bad guy or he's a bad quarterback, but they've had... You think about the last, it feels like a decade at this point, so much money tied up into Kirk Cousins just with these constant contracts. And I'm not saying he's not worth it either. It's just a, it's an interesting situation for Minnesota. So they're, so far, seem like they're happy he's gone. Um, it's kind of a sad thing. He just felt like a Minnesota guy forever. Right. But I'm with you, man. It's a big upgrade for the Atlanta weapons. Desmond Ritter, uh, mm -hmm. as you like to call him, Tyler Heineke sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> they're yeah. trash. They were terrible from the jump. So... Now you got somebody to to play that point guard. I see they did upgrade their uh, their wide receiver two position with Darnell Mooney too as well. Yep. So it'll be interesting to see that uh, Drake London and Kyle Pitts get a little pressure taken off of them better than Mac Collins or whoever the fuck else they're running out there <laughs> number right. two. So I like that offense. And uh, you know if if Kirk's game was built on being like this highly mobile quarterback and a snap coming off a of snap to Keys, I'd be more concerned. But quarterback position come on off snap to Keelys. I can't think of anything that's been really bad in past, like through my NFL fandom where it's been like this guy just, you know, collapsed after returning, at least right. at quarterback, right? Running right. back, different story, wide receiver, obviously. Um, but I like it. I like Kirk Cousins. Atlanta weapons are all looking up and all that uh, me being aggressive on getting Drake London where I ranked him is uh, feeling pretty good right now. And Hell yeah kind of sucks to say because you know we've been so hot and cold me and adam to co combined on this guy with kyle pitts but it's like fuck i might be back in eric <laughs> yeah. i know tight ends don't matter but i might be back in buddy yeah i mean especially with a guy like cousins so i i'm really high on all three of them Bijan, cousins and uh, uh pitts in london so i agree with you on that um 
you know, with Bijan too, like if you look at Dalvin Cook, some of his good years, man, when he was catching fucking 50, 60 balls, like Cousins don't mind checking the ball down to Bijan. Sure. So I I really, really like this for Bijan quite a bit. Um, Drake London too. I think Drake London, he should become a top 15 fantasy wide receiver this year, I would think. I mean, I'm not expecting yeah. him to put up Justin Jefferson type numbers. But I think the other good thing too is was Zach Robinson pretty much coming from the same tree as Kevin O'Connell and Sean McVay and all that, like the offense and uh, wording and all that should be similar. So should be an easy transition for cousins. So they got the best offense in the, uh, in that division by far. So I got a, I got a giant tier three of wide receivers where I have a bunch of guys lumped in together, but probably the guy I was highest out of uh, the whole group uh, all off season has been Michael Pittman. And yeah. with the Kirk cousins news, you know, seven, eight. It's going to be two USC guys that look an awful lot alike. <laughs> Drake right. London, Kyle Pitt, or uh, Drake London, Michael Pittman. So, Pittman, right. I agree with that. Kind of excited. I'm, he's still be a tier three, right? There's still a bunch of guys I'd lump it kind of around him. But if I got to sit there in a draft and you're asking me who I take in what order, it's going to be Drake London before, you know, Devontae Smith, T. Higgins. We'll see where T. Higgins and lines and lines. Ends up, sorry, winds up. Try to yeah. do two words at the same time. Let's see where yeah. he winds up, right? If he goes to Kansas City, all of a sudden, like, all bets are off. It's holy Santa Claus shit. <laughs> right, right, right. right. No, I, I agree with that one. That's a good one. Um, Russell Wilson to the Pittsburgh Steelers. One year, only 1.2 veteran minimum because he's getting 35 from the Broncos. Uh, what do you think about the Russell Wilson fit with the Steelers? I like it, man. We kind of heard those rumors building towards the end of the season. You know, like maybe yeah. Tomlin will go out. It's always kind of been a rumored one, but really just kind of picked up steam and then bam, right before free agency officially kicked off because he was cut by the Broncos. Boom. He's playing in the sign. Uh, they got him dirt cheap. Uh, upgrade over Kenny Pickett, even though I'm still kind Absolutely. of a closet Kenny Pickett fan. Like I still yeah. kind of want to see him succeed, but I like it. Russ there. And the only thing I would uh, caution people against is I'm seeing a lot of George Pickens uh, propaganda and uh even with the Deontay trade, it's like there are one wide receiver in the first round or early second round away from people being back cool on GP, unfortunately, for me. anyways. How about this crazy stat that I saw on NFL Network the other day? So last year, Russell Wilson threw for 26 passing touchdowns, right? Yep. Kenny Pickett has 13 passing touchdowns in two fucking years. <laughs> Russell doubled him last year um, and just in passing touchdowns in one season. That's nuts. Like, that is insane. Just how, like, inefficient he was. Um, I also think, with obviously, with the trade we'll talk about here shortly, too, um, you know, Deontay Johnson moving on, I think that kind of puts Pittsburgh in the looking for a wide receiver in this draft kind of definitely now too like they could be like if brian thomas jr fell to them at 20 or whatever they're picking i think that could be a guy that could pick up they could be an xavier worthy team if they like that speed or they could be um you know lad mcconkey you know somebody like that they could definitely be in the range to maybe draft a receiver in the first round now with trading deontay so a sneaky good comp for lad mcconkey too has always been antonio brown so just kind of think about that one I kind of like that comp, even though, you know, obviously skin color comes into it and people just pigeonhole him as Hunter Renfro. <laughs> Go look at the size and the measurables, man. Right. Game kind of predicated on the same things, too. So I could see a lot of uh, lad love if you were to end up there in the second round. You know? Yeah, that would be that would be nice. I like, um, you know, Russell likes to throw the ball deep downfield. Like Moon George balls, Pickens. baby. Yeah, George Pickens, go get it. So I, I like that. Um, Fryer moves should work well with him. But I still think they're going to kind of still be a more, kind of like what the Seahawks were, you know, more of a run team early on. You know, they're yep. not going to let Russ fucking throw it 50 times a game. But, uh, you know, if Russell can be efficient, I think he can do pretty good. So I like that one. I think the uh, the George Pickens thing, I'm just going to wait and see what happens in the draft, right? Right. If they if they don't go out and get like a big name or somebody to really threaten George Pickens, I'll be in on GP just like the rest of them. You kind of think about the Tennessee Titans under Arthur Smith, the Ryan Tannehill. Like, why can't Russ be that kind of efficient quarterback? Right, the stats aren't going to blow you away, but it's definitely an upgrade for the offense. And sneakily, people are going to hype up Jalen Warren, but uh, 
old Najee Harris, man. Old, crusty Najee Harris. That offense is going to be a lot more efficient, more scoring opportunities for him. And you see he's the guy in on the goal lines anyway, so. Right. There's just there's too much Najee hate out there. He's been in, what, three three seasons now? He's had 1,000 yep. yards in each season, so. Like, he's just been solid. It's just the fact he's unsexy right. and. You know, we never right, saw him run a 40, so people think he runs a 4.8 or something. <laughs> right, yeah, no. Um, and then these other quarterbacks, so, you know, just any of that that you like. Gardner Minshew to the Raiders, Brissett to the Patriots, Jameis to the Browns, Tyrod Taylor to the Jets, Darnold to the Vikings, and Locke to the Giants. Any of those that you really like? None. <laughs> I mean, they're all just backup guys, bridge quarterbacks. Uh, the Brissett one to the Patriots, I like. That's a perfect guy if they end up going Jane Daniels or they go Drake May or whatever. Takes the pressure off whoever New England takes if it's at the top of the draft. I hope they don't do something stupid, though, and, you know, like take Marv. Marv would be fine, ultimately, but then you're probably looking in the second round, you do something like Bo Nix or Michael Penix or, you know, maybe Spencer Rattler in the third or fourth. It's like, I mean, th- that would be it- so unsexy. They got so many goddamn holes though. Like if they just traded down from three, still picked up a you know offensive right. tackle or neighbors or Udunze instead, and just accumulated more assets and like never took a quarterback, I'd be fine with that. They just roll with Brissett for a year and have Zappy as the backup. That's fair too. Yeah, That's fair like, too. All of a sudden, Jacoby walks into like all those guys should be on your radar. As we did a show way back when, remember the uh, backup quarterback ranks, right? Right. Like, all those guys are going to be top-tier options, just roster Just roster Exactly. You don't know who's going to be the bridge guy. You don't know who's going to walk into a starting role for an entire season, a Geno Smith-esque type thing where it's unsexy, a Baker Mayfield last year, like that kind of thing. And all of a sudden, you're you're getting, what, top-end QB2 production, mid-QB2 production, mm-hmm. and, it you know, this time of the year it costs you a third, fourth, right, something like right. that. Why not take a shot on a roster at least? Absolutely, I agree. I like I've every single one of these them. guys. Another one that we didn't mention, but he got traded was Mac Jones to the Jaguars. I picked up some Mac Jones in some trades. Like he becomes a yep. top tier backup quarterback for me in in dynasty. So that's another guy I picked up quite a bit. Um, the one that I wanted to mention on here was Gardner Minshew. Like I think I think he's a solid quarterback. He's always you know protected the ball fairly well and all that, and he's been. Adequate, very good top end backup quarterback. I don't know if he's gonna beat out O'Connell though. I think it's I think that's mm-hmm. honestly going to be a legit competition in camp and all that. So we'll see how that one goes. Um, but if that's the only the Raiders only move, I think that's an interesting quarterback room, Minshew and O'Connell. Like I don't know. I think they can win some games still because that defense is gonna be legit. You know, they still got Devontae Adams. You know, Zamir White's going to be running the ball now there. So we'll we'll see what happens there with the Raiders. But I am intrigued because um, I kind of think that gives my guy O'Connell a shot to beat out Minshew and be the starter, honestly. Yeah, it doesn't kill it. Um, right. One that one that we got to mention, too, the Justin Fields thing. Still hasn't dealt market. Yeah. By all accounts, is drying up. You know, I got a little egg on my face, but it, there's still a little hope out there. Like, I still cling to it. Right. If you're just matching up how many quarterbacks are going in the first round, if you say it's four, there's still what two two other teams that are going to miss out that still need quarterbacks. Right. The Raiders being one. Yeah. Right. There's still Broncos. a possibility of them. The Broncos in the AFC. Uh, we'll see if the Vikings can get themselves in position to get a JJ McCarthy or Drake May in a trade up, and then you always have the Patriots. Like you were talking, you know, why not throw a third for Justin Fields? Now you got Fields and Brissett. Trade back, get more assets. You don't have to take Marv. Like you said, so there's still a few teams in play for him, but uh, I'm sure for Justin Fields in his camp, he's like, "Oh shit, man! I thought we were gonna be a hot commodity." And <laughs> right. Atlanta yeah. was like, "Nah, we're good. We're gonna pay Kirk Cousins way too much money, but we're gonna do it." <laughs> right. Uh, all right. Moving on to the running backs here. A lot of running back signings. Uh, I'm surprised that like all these guys signed already. Like no one like had to hold out or anything. And I think a lot has to do with the uh, cap going up. These, a lot of these teams have extra money they didn't expect to spend, and they're like, oh, fuck it, we'll just buy a good running back. So Saquon Barkley to the Eagles. What did you think of that one, your hometown – or not hometown team, but your favorite team? Favorite team, man. Get the lotion out. I'll be getting a Saquon jersey real soon. Trust me. Oh, yeah. so, as soon as that goes up, the Kelly Green one. Uh, okay. Played at – you know, we know he played at Penn State. Penn but State, yep. 
he'd been linked to Philly, you know, since he was a prospect in, in college, right? The whole Penn State thing and, you know, let's get Saquon in the draft. Didn't work out that way. Giants took him before we could. Then I had to watch him for years play against the Eagles and kill him and hated it. And <laughs> By far and away, though, uh, if you're just looking at talent, the most talented running back in the league, no question. Yeah, I'm pure For talent. Me. I agree. Yeah. I mean, Nick Chubb is awesome, but Saquon has that ability to, you know, be Christian McCaffrey-esque in the passing game too. Yeah, I mean, I would say, you know, out of the last, you know, whatever it's been years, eight years or so, it's it's Barkley and Bijan are, are the top two, like, most talented running backs that have come out. So I Yeah, agree with that. I, I could definitely get behind that. Brees is no slouch, but those guys are just in a little bit different class, which is why you saw him go in the right. first round very, very high. Uh, I'm I'm thrilled. I'm over the moon with it. Put him behind that offensive line. I know it took a hit with Kelsey retiring, but anybody who follows the Eagles knows that Cam Jurgens or Dickerson, who just got a massive fucking contract, <laughs> those yeah. guys are good. So yeah, those they're, guys they're are good. good. Yeah, and they always invest in the offensive line. So I wouldn't be shocked gonna... if they take another one this year. Yeah, so they're they're going to be good there. My only slight concern is, you know, Jalen Hurts and that offense, they don't really throw to the running backs all that often, so he's not going to be some 60, 70 catch guy, but he'll probably still be in the 40s, you know, somewhere in that range. So. Somewhere in the ballpark. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, DeAndre Swift is kind of – he was a little bit more part-time than I wanted to see last year at times in the game plan. Still had 40 catches. Right. 39 yeah. to be exact, but we'll round up here for... <laughs> yeah, yeah, 40, 50 catches is not out of the realm of possibility, which puts you in very decent territory for a running back. Yeah, I agree but with that. the one thing, man, I will say this is the best offensive line Saquon Barkley's ever been behind. Ever. Oh, easily. He doesn't have to bury Sanders that shit all the time every time he's taking a handoff, right? Yeah, I think the only worst offensive line than the Giants I've seen is that Florida State offensive line Cam Akers had to run. Oh, through. yeah. Jesus. <laughs> what a sieve. Yeah. Uh, all right, next one up. Josh Jacobs to the Packers. This one kind of came out of left field. Um, I didn't really see the Packers being the team to splurge on a running back, but uh, Josh Jacobs to the Packers. If it's Josh Jacobs of a couple years ago, we're in. Mm-hmm. You like it's it. not like he's ancient. He's I think he's still 25 or 26 this year he's coming up on, so it's not like he's ancient. He looked very mid at times last year, yeah, especially the first part of the season. It was yeah. like MIA. Yeah, I mean, he had a – playing on the franchise tag, he did have a decent amount of money, so probably – he didn't wasn't very motivated, it didn't seem right. like, yeah. Yeah, but he still got four years, $48 million from – Green Bay, I don't know how many of those are fake years and fake money, but um, pretty good deal for him. They cleared out that whole fucking room. A.J. Dillon was cu- uh, was a free agent. Aaron Jones got cut. It's it's the whole Josh Jacobs show. I'm sure they'll you know bring in somebody, but there have always been a team that just uses one guy, usually. I mean, with Jones and Dillon, they switched it up, but um, I think Jacobs is definitely going to be the guy here. So I really like... Uh, that landing spot for Josh Jacobs. Quite Sneaky a buy for me, right? Like, I'm not going to get crazy and send a first-rounder in this class for him, but, you know, if I can get him as a package deal with some other stuff, right, just move some pieces around, maybe get an up-tier at running back, in my opinion, I think uh, I'll be in on Jacobs, right? It's an upcoming offense, too, um, and I yep. really, really hope. Uh, we haven't seen a whole lot in free agency so far, but it wasn't a great free agency class for uh, for offense alignment. Right, they don't let those teams go. But if they address it in the draft in a fairly big way, right, they let go of Bakhtiari, who hadn't played for them since like 2010, anyway. Yeah, so and they lost uh, Runyon to the Giants, I believe. If they uh, if they improve that offensive line a little bit, Josh Jacobs could be sneaky good, man. That offense was really humming there, especially down the stretch into the playoffs. So absolutely, good. could have a lot of high value touches there in the red zone for fantasy points. Um, and we'll talk about the guy he uh, replaced basically and got cut was Aaron Jones, and then Aaron Jones next day signed with the Vikings. Pretty good landing spot for uh, for Aaron Jones, kind of fitting in that offense. I think it's going to kind of be him and Aaron Jones as the one-two there, or um, Aaron Jones and Ty Chandler. I'm sorry, uh, going to be the one-two there. That's a pretty good combo. So I, I like the Aaron Jones the Vikings spot. What's What's really crazy, man? I did a podcast for Campus Canton Solo. <laughs> I had a sell list of, like, running backs, right? And Ty Chandler didn't make the list, but he should have for this exact reason, right? These guys that you you and I both, like, we got those running backs that you like, 
And then it just seems like they move up a little bit too much in the off season because people are like, oh, that's the guy right there. We'll just pencil him in. He's going to get most of the touches, right? Tajay Spears, who we'll get to, Ty Chandler, this kind of thing. You know, Zamir White dodged a bullet so far. But like most of the time, right, something bad happens in free agency and all of a sudden you go, shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I paid a second for Ty Chandler? Fuck. Like, if you were paying a mid mid to late third at the time, who gives a shit, right? You're probably going to miss anyways. But for those people that I saw get way too bullish on Ty Chandler, it's Aaron Jones signing. He's just like, ah, come on. Like, yeah. you're hoping for a roll. You're hoping for 40%, 50% of the touches at best. But yeah, I mean, don't Aaron be Jones surprised if it's only, like, 30% and you're going, like, I don't even right. know when to start this dude unless Aaron Jones is hurt. Yeah, and Aaron Jones has been hurt before, so that's not, you know, out of the realm of possibility. But also, Aaron Jones has never been like that elite workhorse either. So, And most of the teams have committee running backs anyways that come in and play. So I expect Chandler to still be decent. Is he worth, like, some second-round draft pick? No, but he'll still be fine and usable in fantasy. Um, the other guy that got cut, well, cut and then traded, basically, was Joe Mixon to the Texans. What did you think of that one? uh nice nice get for them uh right. dirt cheap and they get to kick yeah, the tires they get to kick the tires on him and see if he's got anything left uh yeah. you you saw Devin Singletary thrive now my only hesitation is just the way they run that offense right Damian Pierce showed out the year before they changed the offense under Slovak went to a more of a zone scheme uh Joe Mixon splits in gap versus zone is pretty bad like Damian Pierce level bad right. <laughs> the difference it's... between the two so I think he has the ability, um, but we'll see. But it's it's a nice, like, kick the tires. We'll see what we got. We needed to replace Singletary, and maybe we'll get a little juice. Right, and it's similar offense with Slowick coming from the 49er Shanahan system. Zach Taylor was with McVay and the Rams system, so they're kind of similar system. So it is a good fit for Mixon. Uh, definitely going to be over Damian Pierce. So I think it was a, a pretty good landing spot for Joe Mixon. And excuse me, the uh, Texans were in on some running backs. Like, they were in on talking to Saquon Barkley before he signed and a couple of the other of these guys. So uh, to get Joe Mixon for one year, six mil, I think that's a hell of a deal for them. They probably got one of the better running back deals um, out there. Uh, well, I will probably move him down my rank, so just because of go from Cincy, not that Houston's a bad offense or anything. It's just a little bit more uncertain. If he would have stayed in Cincinnati with that offense, just the way they used him and the familiarity, would have kept him where he is, kind of like that James Conner-esque, you know, guy's not mm -hmm. sexy, but he's going to score fantasy points. A little bit more concern in, in Houston, but he'll be solid. Yeah, I agree. Um, all right, the next big one up was Derek Henry to the Ravens. This kind of seemed like since free agency started, this was like the match made in heaven um, for a lot of people. So Henry to the Ravens. I think this is a really good landing spot. Slam dunk. Now, the only concern is they ended up trading away an offensive tackle. So yeah. right now they're only returning starters on their offensive line, <laughs> Linderbaum, and their left tackle. <laughs> That's yeah. it. So they got to figure out everything else. But I love it. I love it the way they use Lamar, take some pressure off of Henry. All of a sudden, Lamar grew as a pocket passer uh, last year, definitely just throwing the ball all over. So I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, I I wouldn't be like I don't want to like get too out in front on this one of like oh man Derrick Henry's gonna be some fucking monster but like would it be out of the realm of possibility that this fucker puts up fifteen touchdowns again and runs for sixteen hundred yards like no it wouldn't shock me at all no on a one year bet I'm willing yeah. to make it uh, if I gotta go running back ranks right we just talked about I'll probably move Joe Mixon down I'll move Derrick Henry up conversely. Yeah. I agree. I like this uh, spot a lot better than I do the Titans with that awful, terrible offense line, even with five full guys, right? <laughs> right. Well, speaking of that, I was the next guy up on the list was Tony Pollard to the Titans. Uh, what did you think of the Pollard signing kind of now pairing up with Spears? I thought it was a little weird because uh, they're similar in ways. Yep. Yep. So, uh, uh, a lot of people say that Tajay is a better pass catcher. I don't know. I think they're about the same. To me, yeah. I mean, no it's problem. kind of the same guy. I'm with you, the the same guy, but the different. Like they made it a fucking priority. They signed him so early. You know, I'm not going to be one to do the Miles Sanders thing from last year about chasing the money and all this shit. But 
this was one of the things when I said sell Tajay Spears where he was. I mean, he was approaching like RB15, maybe higher in dynasty ranks in the offseason because people knew Henry was going to be gone. I'm like, listen, man, I don't care if it's the same GM. I don't care any of that shit. You bring in a new coaching staff, most of these coaching staffs are like, I want to go get my guys, guys I'm familiar with, guys I think fit my scheme. Those second-year running backs who you kind of saw some stuff but didn't really, they're not fucking safe bets, man. They're not great things no. to put your, your chips down in the offseason yeah. on. So, uh, I don't know. I'm going to take a victory lap, run around in circles, being like, I fucking tried to tell you people, and you argued against it, and I watched <laughs> all the Tajay Spears fucking pipe posts and all this shit on Twitter, and you, you get yep. what you get, man. Hope you yeah. enjoyed sending that late first for a guy who's going to be a 40%, 50% timeshare back. Good luck to you. Yep. Um, Austin Eckler to the commander is going to pair up there with Brian Robinson, Chris Rodriguez. Um, It'd be interesting to see how this one is because it doesn't, didn't seem like a Cliff Kingsbury offense would ha have a running back like this. Like they never really used it in Arizona at all. Um, so I'm kind of interested to see how he plans on using Eckler and Robinson together, but... Um, I think it's going to be a good pairing. Like, they're two talented backs. They had some some moments. If you remember, like, the Chase Edmonds, like, drum beat there early was like, yeah. you know, he was kind of always that guy, and then you saw and some flashes, hurt, right? and then he get fucking hurt, right? Uh, if Eckler can stay healthy, though, maybe he'll be what we always thought Chase Edmonds was going to be in a Cliff Kingsbury offense. Yeah, that's true. And it's not like a super expensive deal, two years, 11 mil. No. So. Yeah. I don't. I don't mind it for them. Um, now you, you'll see. Like this will absolutely tank if I don't know who they take a quarterback at to. If it's Jaden Daniels and this guy is going to run the football all over, right? We know what that means for fantasy catching running backs, right? <laughs> Pass catching right. running backs, probably not good. Okay, not good at all. So uh, we will kind of see what what goes on uh, with Brian Robinson being there too. It's it's just like there's not enough certainty to like be like yeah vindicated on Austin Eckler, but. It's fine. It's fine. Like, he's still going to have some interest. And, in, again, another team that kind of made it a priority to go out and get another running back. Sorry right. about uh, your B-Rob shares, I guess. Just another... Yeah, I mean, I think, I think they're still going to be useful. Like, uh, Eckler's not going to be sure. out there for every drive. So, every team's a fucking committee now. So, it, it, I'm fine with it. Um, yeah, like you said, it would be interesting to see. I, I've heard... Just listening to another show, um, you know, on the Audible fan, uh, football guy, Cecil Lammy talked about it. Um, it seemed like the was Washington was in on Jaden Daniels was the guy that he was hearing at the combine talk and you know being out at late at night and stuff. So we'll see if if that comes true. If Jaden Daniels is their guy, if that does, I think uh, I push Austin Eckler down right now. He's just kind of in that tier five ish for me. You know, RB yeah. twenty to twenty eight range, yeah. like. I had B Rob higher. He's obviously going to move down. You know, anytime you get some more draft competition, especially a guy who's a, a known pass catcher, right? And it's already like, yeah. okay, your third down roll just went into. Yeah, even though Robinson actually did really good in the pass game last right. year, he had some big plays. So, uh, next big one up was DeAndre Swift, which was actually like the very first signing of free agency to the Bears. Same contract as Pollard. I like I like this for the Bears. Swift. Um, there to the Bears to pair up with Khalil Herbert, Roshan Johnson. I think they're kind of done at running back. I don't see them bringing anybody else in, but um, I like this spot for Swift and gives, you know, presumably Caleb Williams another little toy to play with. I had him ranked pretty high. I kind of felt like he was going to come back to Philly. Didn't happen. Um, obviously, the landing spot's worse than Philly, in my opinion, even being a homer. Right. <laughs> That's uh, even if I try to look at this objectively, it's like Chicago rookie quarterback. They're going to have to rely on him some. Um, but I don't know if he's really built to be that like workhorse, right? Like he never really got it in Philly, even though he had massive games at times when they did give him that role. Well, I was kind of flaccid with this one. It was like good to see him kind of get a lead role somewhere. So he's he's going to have some fantasy value. But, I, man, I was approaching RB1 territory for me, and now it's more like eh, I'll probably put you in the 18 range. Yep, that's probably where I have him about to, so I agree with that. Um, and then these other couple running back signings, any of these ones you want to mention, go ahead. Uh, Devin Singletary to the Giants. Gus Oof. Edwards to the Chargers, Zach Moss to the Bengals, Antonio Gibson to the Patriots. 
So Gibbs into the Patriots is going to be interesting, especially if they end up with like a Drake May, that pass catching weapon. I know the reports is they still love Ramondre and all that, but my opinion, man, Antonio Gibson is flat out more talented than Ramondre Stevenson. So you got him away from Ron Rivera, which I wanted, even if it is the Patriots, which makes us all go woof. <laughs> like, ugh. yeah, I kind of like that one. Like I'm a little bit more in on Antonio Gibson than I was. And how about your guy, man? I am very much in on Gus Edwards to the Chargers. Whoever the fuck Jim Harbaugh decided is going to be that old, gross-ass running back, that dude's going to get a fuck ton of carries. <laughs> He's going to get a fuck ton of carries inside the five. So Gus Edwards, at least a one-year bet, I'll skyrocket him up my ranks, right? Absolutely, yeah. It's going to be like shitter sure. James Conner and then like, boom, Gus Edwards. <laughs> okay. I'll take him. Yeah, and it's cheap deal, two years, 6.5 mil. Um, he was with Greg Roman in Baltimore as yep. well, so you know Roman knows him and all that. So yeah, I think that's a really good signing. Moss to the Bengals, I think, will be interesting. I like the Moss and Chase Brown kind of combo. That's two cheap backs. Yep. But I think they can both get it done there. So I like that. Devin Singletary to the Giants. Behind that offensive line, man. No, I thank just, you. Yeah, like I think he's just gonna be like that. Kind of just where he was last year. He's gonna be the back end rb2 that he's starting so you gotta like start him just because he is getting you know the catches and carries and all that but i don't think it's gonna be like yeah you know, i don't see him having a 150 yard game like he had last year with the texans it's probably gonna be a bunch of like 50 60 yard games just kind of look at saquon barkley's stat line from last year and like minus 20 percent off of it he had value because he was on the texans and producing on a good yeah. offense much. He's not going to have a lot of value on a very shitty offense with a very shitty offensive line. Uh, right. Probably that signing made me more bullish on like rostering Eric Gray, just throwing the dart. Right, I can see that. What's he cost you? A fourth, the three eleven. If you're yeah, yeah. Who, a free agent pickup. Yeah. Most yeah, some leagues. I wouldn't be surprised if they pick up somebody else too. So. Yeah, they just bring in a body, which is another guy you're like, yeah, fuck it, why not throw a dart on him? But anybody wants Singletary and wants to bank on last year, you can have him off my team. Right. Uh, wide receivers, we haven't had too much movement, but the couple to mention, we, we did talk about it a little bit before, Deontay Johnson of the Panthers. I like this. He's going to be the number one there because they're not really in a position to draft one this year with not having their first-round pick. Uh, they are picking at the top of the second round, though, so maybe a receiver there. But looks like Deontay Johnson's gonna got traded there. He's gonna be the number one for Bryce Young. I, I like this a lot for Deontay. It kind of uh, moves him up a little bit for me. Still not even twenty eight years old, but it feels like he's been around forever, hasn't it? Yeah, he's been around forever. It seems like uh, seventy seven year old, seventy seven year old Adam Thielen ate in that offense early. Yeah. <laughs> That's the de facto number one. What do you think is going to happen with Deontay? Big riser for me. Yeah. Get him out. De facto number one. You don't see a lot of target competition coming in, right, with the draft. Even if the top of the second round they took another guy, Deontay's still the number one. They have so many fucking holes. Like, they don't even. I don't even know if wide receiver is their second biggest need, you know, biggest need or whatever. And their um, defense just took a massive shit by trading yeah. away Brian Burns for pennies. Burns gone. Jeremy Chin left. Frankie Louvo left. Um, I don't even know if Shaq Thompson's even there anymore. Wheels yeah, up for me for Deontay and Bryce Young, man. I was really glad I've been so aggressive yeah. getting Bryce Young in the offseason. Now they got a number, a number one true alpha who's not 80 years old. <laughs> Yeah, and well, with Canales running that offense, like I could see Deontay doing the shit like Chris Godwin did last year, like that would easily, be perfect. but yeah, without so. any Mike Evans to you know, right? Yeah, so, take I mean, targets. You're gonna have him. you're gonna have Mingo, you're gonna have Thielen out there doing stuff, but they're not like on the level of Deontay Johnson. So I'm that. very excited for this one. That was a big one, and they got him for dirt cheap. Finally, yeah. they made Carolina made a move where you're like, fuck, they, they got one. <laughs> they Absolutely. Got one. Um. Darnell Mooney to the Falcons. I like that spot for him, too. Um, going to be the number two there. I don't think he's going to be having you know, 70, 80 catches or anything, but with Kirk Cousins there, he can take some shots. Mooney's a good professional wide receiver. I think he just kind of got lost with um, Justin Fields and all that last year and just not being able to um, – you know, perform like he was a couple years ago. So Mooney to the Falcons, I like the spot for him is like a good solid wide receiver too. 
about Darnell Mooney being diet Jordan Addison for Kirk Cousins. That field stretcher role. Yeah, absolutely. They had, a, they had a nice chemistry there, too. You know, Drake London taking the Justin Jefferson type, like, hey, this is my alpha I'm going to feed. But, hey, you, you saw Kirk could support three guys, right? Supported Hawks, supported Jefferson, and Addison had some games. So I'm not saying it's going to be completely uh, completely the same, but maybe a little diet Jordan Addison action. I can get yeah. behind that one. Can, Best ball, that's going to be a, a guy you should roster for sure. Absolutely. Um, Gabe Davis to the Jags, um, especially with them, like Calvin Ridley, uh, talking about going back there too, or he wants to go back there. Jaguars are interested too. Like you have Davis and Ridley on the outsides, Kirk in the middle, Ingram. I think it's just like too many mouths to feed. I think Gabe Davis is going to get kind of lost in the shuffle here. I would say maybe, uh, I think he's an upgrade over Zay Jones. And if he fills that kind of role, uh, probably not as good as a route runner as Zay Jones, but definitely a better down th- field threat, right? Yeah. So I I don't mind it. Uh, for fantasy-wise, though, Gabe Davis moves down in the ranks, right? You go from Josh Allen's number two to, you know, Trevor Lawrence's number three. <laughs> That's yeah, three number three four. Signs. Yeah, maybe right. the four. And then you still got ETN who they throw to two as well. Right. Not not great for his fantasy wise, but good for and good NFL signing. And you and I yeah. talked about this months ago, months ago when we were looking at the crystal ball, right? I said Gabe Davis wasn't going back to Buffalo. They couldn't afford him. Oh yeah. Yeah, no. That way. was the cap. Some team was gonna throw enough money at him because he's a good NFL wide receiver. He's a good blocker does all the things that you want to see out of there and he's a good deep threat so yeah. uh fantasy wise yeah you can probably bury gabe davis outside of best ball leagues like you don't want him in yeah, lineups at all best ball option only um and then the last one i just wanted to mention that i like is kendrick Bourne back to the patriots uh, before his acl injury last year he was their number one wide receiver and he was doing pretty good so uh whoever they get there drake may Jaden daniels or if they just stick with jacoby Brissett. I think this is a good veteran wide receiver, best ball leagues especially. Um, Kendrick Bourne's going to be in your lineup a couple times during the year, so I like uh, him going back to the Patriots. Sneaky good spot to be in. And you didn't even mention, man, Philadelphia got a massive wide receiver upgrade. Get the fuck out, Quez Watkins. Hello, Devontae Parker. <laughs> Woof. Um, we can talk about the other Patriots. They re-signed uh, Jalen Rager, too. Whoa. okay. No, thank you. <laughs> Next pass. Okay. All right, tight ends real quick, and then we'll get into the prospects here. Um, I'll just mention some of these tight ends because there's nothing like brown breaking here. But Dalton Schultz of the Texans well, I went back. Uh, Good for Hunter him. Hunter Henry resigned with the Good for him. Patriots. Fan went back to the Seahawks. Bad for Gerald him. Everett to the Bears. Just backup tight end now. Yep. Colby Parkinson to the Rams. I think is going to be sneaky good. I think that might be one of my probably my favorite tight end signing. Yeah, a lot of people are really high on Allen, right? Just because yeah, of the... I, I picked up a shit ton of Allen, but I think Parkinson's going to take that spot. And Allen's just unfortunately, back up. yeah, yep. Um, yeah, Austin Hooper, the Patriots, no one cares. Harrison yeah. Bryant to the Raiders, he's just going to be the backup there. Right. Gasecki to the Bengals, that one's very interesting to me too. Um, this kind of <laughs> just fits like the this could he could be like the tight end like that smashes this year. <laughs> do i do this shit for back-to-back years right i wasn't a big Irv smith fan i've never really been a big mike Gusecki fan but you go to the Bengals as a tight end and i'm like is this the one am i back in i think i'm gonna do it back-to-back years i'm with you eric i'm like yeah. fuck it i'm i'm in on Gusecki. let's go i was a giant Irv smith fan too but those injury all of his injuries that he's had just fucking cratered him he just not good anymore even though Irv smith went to the chiefs i'm not buying in on it sorry no thanks no, thank you. Um, and then the other good one, uh, Jonu Smith to the Dolphins. I think that could be a sneaky good one, too, if they yes. decide to use that uh, tight end spot and kind of kick Durham Smythe to the side. Please. And you saw Smythe actually be usable, especially in some best ball right. leagues or if you're running that A-warp tight end life where it's just like, just give me a dude with a pulse who's starting for a team. Right, right. That's a good one. It's an upgrade. Like, Absolutely. <laughs> like, it didn't kill my Jonu Smith shares. It actually, I was like, all right, fine. You know, if he's not going to follow Arthur Smith to Pittsburgh, why not Miami? Yep. Be the number exactly. one. Exactly. All right. So now let's get into the running back prospects uh, for this draft. So we're going to start off with 
just kind of uh, my general thoughts about the running back class as a whole. So I don't think there there isn't no Brees Hall, there isn't no Jameer Gibbs in this class at all. Uh, I think everybody has kind of said that and beat that to death. So we don't need to talk about that as much. I think the one thing that I'm kind of embracing this year is if somebody tells me, hey, I got Will Shipley as my RB1, I got Cody Schrader as my RB1, okay, awesome, I, I believe it. You know, there is literally like 16 guys in here who could be RB1 this year. Nobody has a clue. There isn't like a guy that super stands out. Like there's guys that I like. Um, there's guys that I don't really like. Um, but there's no like guy that's like sticking out to me as this is the RB1. This guy's the RB2. It is literally all over the place. So RB rankings this year are kind of just going to be your preference. You're going to have to watch these guys or just see where they land um, and and go from there. I'm with you. I have some faves, you know, yeah. long-term faves that are kind of built in. But I'm going to be very fluid with this. And I think the NFL just kind of told you this. I mean, you yeah. touched on when you went through free agent running backs. They hit those guys early and often, and they were like, we're filling this right now. We're not going to wait for the draft. Mm-hmm. I think that's probably a little bit of a signal that even the NFL doesn't really like this running back class. Like they're kind of like, eh, if we get one in the third round, like that might be a little bit of a reach. More of these guys are projecting as fourth, fifth, sixth rounders. Right, right. All right, so we'll start off with um, my Tier 1, and then we can go with your Tier 1 as well. We have, um, I think we have everybody in the same Tier 1 besides one guy. So uh, my Tier 1, number 1, I have Jonathan Brooks from Texas. Number 2, I have Trey Benson from Florida State. Number 3, Blake Corum from Michigan. 4, Jalen Wright from Tennessee and Marshawn Lloyd Number five from USC. That is all of my tier one guys, uh, the guys that I like the most in this draft. Mike has Jonathan Brooks one, Braylon Allen number two, Jalen Wright three, Trey Brenson four, Marshawn Lloyd five, and you have Corum down at seven. So not too far off. Um, we'll start with Jonathan Brooks first. I, I We both like him, obviously, so he's our number ones on both. I think if I had to pick the guy that I've watched that has the most talent – um, could be a really good type of pass catcher. Um, has really good um, instincts in the hole, you know, running and all that. I, I, I've what I've liked everything I've seen from Jonathan Brooks, and I think if he didn't have the ACL surgery, I think he probably would be the one A in this draft, and then everyone else would be behind him. I could get behind that statement. Uh, yeah. he, if he didn't have the ACL, if we lived in that world, he didn't get hurt, and he finished out the way he was playing before he got hurt. Yeah, one A. Uh, I'd have him 1A, 1B would be Braylon Allen for me. Like, that's just a love that I can't quit, right? Uh, But Jonathan Brooks, everything you said. Like, I love what I see on tape. We just watched him in the Discord on Friday night, just the way he moves through the hole, very instinctual, uh, doesn't have a lot of vision problems like some of these guys do, catches the football nice, has very good lateral agility. His jump cut is nasty, nasty. He's a complete back. And, and you think about it, too. It was a guy that was unheralded. You know, we thought coming in this year, C.J. Baxter was going to be the guy, and they tried to make him the guy early, and Jonathan Brooks said, this is fucking my team. This is my backfield. Uh, if you don't believe me, go check out my high school stats, and you see that guy running for, like, 400 yards in high school in a game, and you're going, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jonathan Brooks. I was not aware of your game. Now I am, though, but very good on tape. Checks all the boxes. So ACL injury does kind of push him down, though. Where you're like, I, I don't know. But, hey, the rumors are maybe Dallas in the second round. I don't believe it, but if it were to happen, to your original I mean, point, Eric, all of a sudden that makes you go, yep, there's RB1 for me. Done. Yeah, I the the Dallas rumor um, that everybody has stated, uh, I talked about it on this show a month ago when Dane Brugler's first mock came out. Um, they did the surgery on Jonathan Brooks, so they're going to have the most information and probably be the most comfortable on Jonathan Brooks. Um, they really like him from what I've heard too. And wouldn't be shocked to me if maybe they move up a few spots in round two to kind of secure him, um, Yep. In the draft, so it wouldn't shock me. Uh, another thing that I do like about him, he is really good at um, yards after contact. He averaged almost four yards after contact and had 732 yards total after contact. And he's also a pretty good pass catcher, too. So he is a complete back. Um, 
just the ACL injury that is going to ding him a little bit. He might start off slow, but if I had to pick uh, the guy in this draft that is going to be a perennial starter, you go going to be a top 12 dynasty running back at some point in his career. I think it's going to be Brooks. I can get behind a lot of that grades out very well. Yeah. Go ahead and um, give me your Braylon Allen at two love. Why do you like Braylon Allen at two? So a lot of this too, like, I am biased to Braylon Allen. Loved him since his freshman year. Uh, got talked into him. Wasn't a fan early. But then just the story, right? Being a safety slash linebacker, he did play running back in high school a little bit, but he was coming into Wisconsin, and they just said, hey, you're going to be a running back now. We're going to move you. Defensive convert. Came in young, dominated, dominated stat-wise yep. as a 17-year-old freshman. So if you look at analytical profiles of all these running backs who are eligible in this class, the best one, the best one by far is Braylon Allen. Now, he still has some things analytically where you go, okay, little red flag, but it's kind of the the class as a whole. Film guys are kind of all over the map on him. Some people really like him. Some people don't. Some people think he has slow feet. Some people don't think he has the speed. You know, I watched him house a 96-yarder, and I was like, okay, that's enough. <laughs> You're okay. Um, pass catching for me. He switched offenses. They were this big, you know, traditional Wisconsin power gap scheme early on in his career. You know, yeah. think about all the Wisconsin backs that have come out. It's Jonathan Taylor-esque, right? They ran the same yeah. scheme. They went to more of a spread it out shotgun pass scheme, and he still put up numbers. And he showed that he could catch the football, right? He goes to the combine. I was kind of depressed that he didn't test, so it must have been bad in his mind. Or maybe he, I don't know, maybe he got bad advice. Even if he would have came out and he ran a, you know, high four fives, four five nine, four six, whatever. At that size, he still would have had a decent enough speed score where you're like, okay. But he didn't do anything at all, so you don't know. Then you watched him go through the drills, and when I watched him on the on-field drills, I thought he looked just fine, right? Blake Corum is much smaller back, and Braylon Allen's feet look just as fast to me. He's making the right. same kind of cuts, same kind of moves through the bags. I thought he was completely fine at the combine, so... Uh, it's kind of been a hot and cold thing, you know, people telling me I'm crazy, ranking them so high, and then other times I just watch it and I go, yeah, like, I want a 20-year-old coming in the NFL that looks like a fucking Adonis, and I've seen play college football in the Big Ten for three years and mm -hmm. be fucking elite. Yeah. So, uh, I like him. Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen him play, you know, like you said, Big Ten, we, we both watch it a lot. I've seen him play, really good player. Um, you know, it did bother me a little bit this year that, like, Here's his junior year, and he wasn't, like, the guy because he had somebody else with him playing, too, um, splitting the carries and the work that was, you know, eating into a lot of his work as well. So that kind of mm -hmm. bothered me just a little bit. Um, he's not, like, a super elite pass catcher. He's probably just a check down option at best. Um, I don't see him being, like, Devin a chain or Austin Eckler out there or anything. Um but yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see what happens with him. He is a big fucking bowling ball. He's like 240 pounds too, so he does have the NFL size and, and all that to, you know, be a feature back in, at the next level. I think it's gonna kind of just depend on where he ends up, um, for me. But he's he's still in my second tier, so it's not like I'm uh, down on him completely. Right. Um, it's just some advanced PFF stats on him too, where like. You got to tell me whether or not this matches up or not, but yards after contact per attempt. I mean, you're talking a top 15 right. guy in this class, you know, yeah. with anybody who hit the minimum carry threshold. That's not bad. There's some names that we're going to get to that are way down on this fucking list there. Right. As soon as they get hit, they fall over. Like, worse than Rashad White coming out, and that was yeah. a big knock against him. Missed tackles forced, 13th in the country. And that's not bad for a guy that's 235 fucking pounds. Right. Um. So my number two was Trey Benson from Florida State. So when I watched him, uh, you know, obviously his testing was really good. He kind of compares um, with his athletic testing to Brees Hall that they've they've talked about, kind of compared to. I don't know if he is Brees Hall. I know there's not very many Brees Halls in the world, but um, I could see like glimpses of it at least at times. I think you know, you, me and you kind of talked about a pre-show that his you know running. Um, behind the lines his vision isn't that great needs to improve a little bit um but i've i've liked what i saw from from him i mean um he does have a serious knee injury in his past too so hopefully all that checks out and all that 
Um, but whenever I watch him, man, he just had he had great footwork, um, quickness, all that kind of stuff that I really liked. Uh, powerful runner. He he had a really good yards after contact. He racked up over twelve hundred yards um, in total yards after contact in his career, and he had zero fumbles in his career too. So he takes care of the ball really really well. You know, teams are gonna value that and like that a lot. So I have Trey Benson as my RB two. What's your thoughts on Benson? He's a hard one for me. His athletic comps, his comparables are elite. You touched on Brees Hall, like almost a spitting image, right? And usually that's something I get pretty excited about. But, you know, I'm a, I'm not even going to say, I'm a, not even a closet. I'm a Florida State fan too, right? That was uh, the first team I fell in love with growing up, even before my Iowa Hawkeyes, even though I live here. But the Peter Warwick days, <laughs> that was my dude. So I, I've followed Florida State for a long time and, He's, he's never really impressed me or wowed. Like, they need him in a game, he never showed up. Wouldn't do anything. He'd show up against really trash teams that in, you expect him to break off a long run against, you know, FCS teams. <laughs> like, that's what I expect. A lot of his issues, too, when you watch it, he's got the vision of Trent Richardson. Right. For me, that's a giant red flag, man. I don't care how athletic you are. Trent Richardson was an athletic freak, but dude runs in the back of his offense alignment all the time. <laughs> There's a giant gaping hole you could drive a semi through. Didn't see it at all. His vision is one of the worst in the class, in my opinion. So right. this is a this is a I rank him high because maybe the NFL's in on him and draft capital is going to be a big determining factor on how these guys shake out for me because the class is just so bad top to bottom, in my opinion. If the NFL's in, I'm in. If the NFL's not in, <laughs> he ends up going in the fourth round or the fifth round. All right, then your ass is going to go down in the ranks because obviously they see the same things where they go. I don't care how much you uh, like Kenny Owangu, right? That's another athletic freak, but we've never seen shit from him in the running back position. Why? Because he doesn't know how to fucking read holes. <laughs> There's one Just kick guy... return, right? Put him in the open field. That's it. But yep. playing NFL running back, you're not going to have those wide open lanes all the time. Yeah, there's one guy in this class that's an athletic freak we'll talk about later uh, that I feel the same way about as like Ken A. M. Wagner. So uh, we'll get to him later. Um, next one up I want to mention, I have him at three, and you had him at seven, and that's Blake Corum from Michigan. Um, so I'll go with Corum since I like him the best. I He is north-south runner, no bullshit. He's always going to get you what's there, basically. He kind of, you know, he's been compared a little bit to Kyron Williams lately, and I kind of agree with it. With the athletic test testing, Kyron Williams, everyone completely put fucking shovelfuls of dirt on him after his athletic testing. I didn't think Blake Corum was going to come in and, like, be some 4-4 guy. I think he was in the 4-5s of his running um, at, in the 40. And I was fine with it. Like, I think... You know, Kyron Williams can have success in the NFL last year. He was one of the top fantasy running backs last year in the NFL in a certain scheme and all that. Um, and he was great last year. Like, I think Corum is just going to be kind of similar. Like, he's going to be put into a certain scheme. I'm kind of hoping he goes to the Chargers secretly just to be with Harbaugh again, run a really good system there with Greg Roman. Like, I think landing spot will definitely help him. Uh, but man, I, I just really liked what I saw from Corm. He was he was a crafty little runner. He's faster than you think he think he is. Um, change of direction and vision was really good. He has very good patience. You know, always let the hole develop, and then he would burst right through it. He's just a really good, smart football player. And I think Blake Corm is going to have a long NFL career. So that I liked him a lot. So I have a few problems with Corm. Um, I can't put him in tier one. We watch film on him. I came away just mid yeah like nothing's gonna impress you because like michigan is just such a fucking dominant team like one of the best offensive lines everything just looks so easy so it, like you said it's kind of just blah the analytics that i really care about for running backs every one of his has pretty much declined every year he's been in michigan okay. right a lot of people point to the the knee injury you know that's why this year wasn't as impressive but even before the knee injury last year it, it was already trending down from before. So, like, the more he got work, the worse he got in analytical profile, which isn't crazy to say, right? But his yards after contact per attempt, I mean, you're talking about a guy who's 69th in the country last year. 
out of draft eligible running backs who met the carry threshold on PFF. That's not very good for me. And then it, it shows up on tape, right? You, you kind of hit it. He gets what's blocked. Yeah. Not a lot of creativeness. Probably not hitting the home run. You know, if, if you need four yards, he's getting four yards. If you need six yards, he's getting four yards. Yeah. Not very inspiring. <laughs> it's just for me. Like, I don't think he's terrible by any stretch of the imagination. It's just like when I came away from evaluating him, especially the tape backed it up. It was just like, ugh. Like, you're really lucky Donovan Edwards really sucked last year. <laughs> right. I mean, he, yeah, he's been a workhorse for two years. Obviously, he set the Michigan touchdown record this year, but 27 fucking rushing touchdowns this year. He had 18 the year before. Um, I don't know. I, I just I like him a lot. I like his game a lot, kind of, like I said, kind of similar to Kyron Williams for me. So that was a guy um, that I did like. He reminded me a lot of Devin Singletary with less juice. Okay, and that's that. weird to say too when you say juice and Singletary in the same sentence. But yeah, Singletary was more shifty in the hole; felt like he made more people miss. Um, yeah, core was it just as has yeah. fall down? Yeah, Singletary's biggest was the size and just the fact he didn't have that breakaway speed. But Corum is like even less of that. But you know, if he gets right. draft capital again, like a lot of these guys, reevaluate, re rank yeah. him. So I just kind of put him in that mid territory where it's like he could be yeah, something, he could be that's... nothing. That's kind of why I thought kind of like Kyron Williams. Like Kyron Williams didn't test elite, but he was a good right. fucking player at Notre Dame. Um, I think it's gonna hopefully be the same thing for him uh, coming in the NFL. Uh, next one you had at three, I have at four, so we're very similar on him. Was Jalen Wright from Tennessee? I'll let you go ahead and start with Jalen Wright. I've, Jalen Wright's an interesting one. He's a tough eval, right? Came in and tested like an Adonis, uh, and then you watch the tape. Unlike Trey Benson, he shows up with that athletic profile like all oh, yeah. the time all the time just a walking highlight reel now my biggest concern about jalen wright i love everything i've seen from him the tape looks good it's that fucking tennessee offense man it's yeah. that you know they got two wide receivers well outside the hashes damn near standing on the sidelines the entire defense is spread out he's running against light boxes every play yep. and for a guy who's built like that like that's putting him in a perfect situation to do what he does best hit the home run right here's a handoff here's a crease straight line gone see ya you know, hitting my head on the goalpost type thing. Not going to be the same thing in the NFL. He's drawn a lot of Alvin Kamara comps, and they're very, very different players, right? Yeah, like the size, the Tennessee thing is about the only thing they have in common. But Alvin <laughs> Kamara is shifty as fuck, yards after contact, contact balance, everything, right? Like it's it's a it's a load to take Alvin Kamara down. It doesn't really feel like too much of a challenge to take Jalen right down as long as you can catch him. <laughs> yeah. Jalen Wright's more physical too. He's a more physical runner, has right. great long speed. He's not like uh Kamara, he's gonna shift you out of your shoes or anything like that. Like he's kind of like a, a north south runner, kind of I think he would be best in like a a Shanahan scheme or a McVeigh scheme well, yeah. where he can kind of be, you know, hit that gap and fucking go. Uh that's kind of where I'm hoping he would land. I'm I'm sure there's gonna be a gap scheme team that fucking likes him, like wouldn't shock me like, you know, hey, Minnesota takes him and that just completely kills Ty Chandler, but Jalen Wright goes there and succeeds. He's he's um, a bigger A Chan with less wiggle. Right. I That's kind of that. like more like a, a Tevin Coleman type to me. Mm -hmm. Right? Tevin good, Tevin you got in that, that Shanahan scheme, he just he'd find the crease and then just fucking good luck. Like right. but if he couldn't find the crease, there wasn't a crease there, he's not creating a lot on his own. So yeah. Scheme, like, you're right though. If he landed in a spot where it's like that Shanahan style stretch zone run, yep. fucking sign me up for some Jalen Wright as RB one of the class. But if yeah, he, cause... if he winds up in a scheme like Buffalo where they gotta like create or you know we're gonna run gap, we're gonna run power, we're not gonna have all these giant creases. We need you to be creative. It's like I, I gotta see him do it yeah. first. Right. And he hits that fucking hole and he's gone. So that's another thing I like about him. He is definitely the, uh, probably the most explosive back in this class for me um, as far as like a home yeah. run hitter. Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, next one up. Uh, I have Marshawn Lloyd at five and you have Marshawn Lloyd at five. So we'll go ahead and talk about Marshawn Lloyd. Definitely um, a very versatile back. I think he's a lot like it, it shows that he didn't catch the ball a lot. He had 18 in 2022, 13 last year. But I think he's actually a really good pass catcher. Like, I've seen him make some moves in the open field. So I think 
hopefully he gets into a system and I think he can be a little bit better of a receiving back than he is uh, given credit for. He is a uh, very versatile back, efficient runner. He has breakaway ability as well. It's not like he's slow or anything. P performed pretty good at the combine. Shiftiness, uh, pass blocking is really good. Um, I've seen as well. I think he's, he's kind of like... Um, He's a really good package, and I think somebody's going to get on day two, and I think it's going to work really well for him. So I, I like Marshawn Lloyd quite a bit. I like him a lot, and he could be RB1 in this class if he got the Absolutely. requisite draft capital. Uh, probably the most creative in the hole, out of the hole, bouncer runs to the outside, cutbacks, et cetera. Uh, you didn't see a lot of pass catching at his stops, but senior bowl, he looked just fine. Combine yeah. looked just fine. Obviously athletic as hell came out yeah. and just tested amazingly for a guy that size uh kind of reminds me a little bit of a bigger deandre swift coming out of georgia uh, his problem was injuries uh, i don't know if marshall lloyd quite has the patch ca pass catching prowess of deandre swift but he looked good to me doing it but creative runner explosive can get away from people uh led the country right we're talking about pff advanced metrics breakaway run rate number one out of all these guys yeah. And it's not relatively close. <laughs> so uh, PFF does knock him, though. They gave him a 28.9 pass block grade, so that's pretty shitty. Interesting, yeah, because uh, the one that I'm looking at says he was an incredible pass blocker. So I don't know, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> PFF must hate him, though. Yeah. They, when they looked at it, they said it was terrible. But yeah. uh, he okay. does have some ball security problems, too. Uh, a lot of fumbles. Full, full disclosure: I'm not fucking watching pass blocking fucking clips. I believe it. I don't think I don't think anybody is. So, um, but yeah, I mean, another thing too: ball security. He had eight fumbles um, over three years, so he's gonna have to really work on that. But that could be worked on. Like, there's different techniques that these guys can do. Like, I don't, I don't. You're you're in my age bracket. You remember when fucking Tiki Barber couldn't yep. hold on to the fucking ball? Now you gotta hold it high and tight, baby. Like up yeah. here, and use then, that and bicep. Then he learned his little technique, and that dude was a fucking fantasy machine there for a couple seasons after he learned how to hold on to the damn ball. And the biggest Saquon Barkley hater alive right now. Yeah, yeah, he is relevant to uh, today. So yeah, I mean Marshawn Lloyd, last of our tier one guys. Uh, we both really like him quite a bit. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited for him. Uh, when I go down to tier two, your tier two, you have Ray Davis from Kentucky, Blake Corum, Michigan, Bucky Irving from Oregon and Will Shipley from Clemson. And then my tier two, I have Bucky Irving, Braylon Allen and Ray Davis. So, uh, go ahead with Ray Davis. What do you like about him from Kentucky? Number one, you got to lead off. Fantastic story about Ray Davis. But I yeah. think he's just a solid running back, right? He's a lot of everything I think people hype Blake Corum up to be, but he just does it at a better clip, in yeah. my opinion. And he did it in the SEC, right? Yeah. Played against real competition. Congrats to Michigan for winning the national championship, but please do yourself a favor and go look at their schedule and tell me all the powerhouses they played this year. <laughs> like, right, right. Wasn't a lot. <laughs> kind of a cakewalk to, uh, to that undefeated season, so... Uh, not to take anything away from him, you you win the championship. But uh, Ray Davis did it against SEC defense this weekend and week out, and you're going to see a lot of SEC guys go in the draft that are defensive players, and every fucking year, that's why. <laughs> yeah, agreed. So uh, I like Ray Davis. He put up the numbers. Solid, not sexy. Yeah, 220 pounds, too. Gonna, he's going to be a big physical back, so I like that. And he's actually a really good pass catcher for his size. I, he had a couple plays – um, with Devin Leary last year where he, I, there was one like broken play where he went from one side to the field, cut it all the way across back to the other side of the field and ran it all the way for like a 70 yard, 60 yard uh, pass catching touchdown. So he's got moves in the open field a little bit. I'm not saying like he's fucking De Devin a chain or Chris Johnson or something like that, but um, he is patient behind line of scrimmage. So that was really impressive for me. He's going to explode through the holes there. I really like his game, too. It's going to be a guy. Uh, he is an older prospect, which sucks. He's already 24 years old, so he's probably just going to be a one-contract guy, and then you're not going to get much out of him. But I think in a committee, Ray Davis could be a, a really good um, you know, really good player for somebody, especially with his pass-catching ability. I think that's going to um, allow him to have a pretty good fantasy career. Yep, I like him as a very solid back. Uh, next one up, we'll go with Dynasty Barry's favorite player, Bucky Irving. What did you see from Bucky? I love Bucky's tape. Bucky's tape is amazing to watch. 
Uh, that's yes, a guy who fantastic. just doesn't give a fuck and just makes people miss left and right. The biggest problem with Bucky and why I moved him down and why he may fall completely out of the NFL draft and could be an undrafted free agent, it's still to be seen. That fucking combine was horrendous. It was yeah. horrible. I mean, I I don't really care that you ran slow. You ran slow at your size. You know, I could still maybe get behind a, you know, Devin Singletary comp, you know, yeah. you could have a role, et cetera. The fucking explosion testing was horrible. The guy can't vert for anything. Like, a, yeah. what do you have, a 29-inch vertical? Eric, I'm 315. I might have a 29-inch <laughs> vertical 37 years. I'm not fucking lying. I might actually be able to hit that. Like, what? But then you, you watch the film, and you're like, fuck, man, this guy's good. And yeah, it looks nothing like his testing at all. This is the whole conundrum with the Oregon system as a whole right like you watch it and you watch the offense or you look at the stats at the end of the game and you're like god this offense is humming and you put on the film of the offense and like some things start to show like bo nix why the fuck do you only throw screen passes (laughs) oh okay you can't throw the ball down the field troy franklin you know issue catch the goddamn ball troy franklin again at the combine didn't do himself any favor so a lot of questions kind of sneaking in on this oregon offense as a whole but bucky Mm -hmm. Irvin, probably the biggest loser out of these guys is just going to the combine but I still yeah. rank him up here because the fucking tape, man, the tape is so good watching him yeah. play. Like making it, you want to go look at yards after contact per attempt for a small guy. He fucking is a hammer at it. Missed tackles, force. That guy's elite catching the football, running routes, doing the whole thing, holding on to the ball. Uh, probably the biggest knock though. And it's to be expected. His pass blocking grade is absolutely abysmal. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a 23 Not a grade from, from BFF. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But there's a tiny guy, so I don't expect a lot. But I wish he would have tested a little bit better so I could have really stuck the Dion Lewis comp, which really would have felt good for him. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think he's going to kind of have to stick to, like, a gap scheme, you know, like the Miamis, the 49ers, the Rams, those teams like that. Um, Really good receiving back, 56 catches last year, 31 catches the year before. So he's going to be a a pretty good receiving back. I don't know if he's going to be – you know, some downfield threat, but, you know, over the middle, uh, dump off, stuff like that, and he's going to be able to make you miss at least. Um, So I like that from him. Spatial awareness, his burst is really good. It doesn't obviously have the long speed because he tested like shit. Um, His vision is actually pretty good, finding cutback lanes and, and, and angles and stuff like that. He's really good at it, like... I think people are shitting on the combine. Obviously, it was terrible, but so was Kyron Williams. And look what Kyron Williams became. So, not saying Bucky Irving is going to be Kyron Williams because he's not as you know big, one hundred ninety pounds or whatever Bucky Irving is. Uh, but I think he's going to find a role. I don't think he'll go undrafted, uh, but he might go fifth, sixth, fifth, fifth or sixth round, and you know when we're expecting maybe third, fourth round. And I think he could be a useful. NFL running back in a committee like he's never going to be you know starting for an NFL team or anything like that carry the load but he can be a useful weapon for somebody um, that could you know in the open field and letting him get some open lanes and dump offs and shit I think Bucky Irving is going to be just fine so I did have him in my first tier before the combine after the combine I did move him down a tier like you did as well so um, I am acknowledging that the we're, he's not as athletic as we all thought he was, you know, just watching the tape. Um, but I still think he's a really good player. I think he's going to have a role in the NFL somewhere. Yep. Yep. Um, next one up, Will Shipley. I'll, I'll let you talk about Shipley as well because he's the top of my tier three. So uh, last one of your tier two. If Will Shipley had changed his name to, you know, Bob Brown and was a three-star recruit and didn't play at Clemson and wasn't white, he wouldn't be this high. Right, right. This is God's honest truth, man. A lot of that Devi C2C stuff is just coming into play, right? He's still in people's minds because of it, but point to something that Will Shipley does really good. <laughs> he's just kind of a guy. Um, I don't know if he's as, uh, we're as down on him as like what Max Borgie from a couple years ago. Remember the hype he had and then, you know, the next CMC and then that never materialized. And I don't think we've, seen max borgie in an actual nfl game maybe no yeah that was one of the debbie darlings there for a while yeah i mean he can't pass block worth the shit he's okay at route running 
he's okay catching the football. He's not very explosive. I guess Will Shipley's like only hoping we didn't get to see it at the combine was if he came out and he ran in the four fours, four threes, and people would have been like, see, I told you, and then the hype. So I put him at nine, but a lot of that's just left over from, you know, everything we thought Will Shipley was going to be, I guess. Right. So it's just kind of um, meh. Like, could he do something? Would I be shocked? No. I mean, the pedigree's there for sure, but I think it's probably one of those guys that we just get too high on and we always just kind of carry that, you know. He's going to be rostered everywhere. People would draft him in the third round everywhere, even if he's a fifth-round NFL pick. Yeah. And we'll never see or hear from him actually again. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm, I'm not as low on him as you are, but I think he could at least be a useful receiving back in the NFL. He could be somebody's third down back. Uh, obviously, he's going to have to pick up on the pass blocking a little bit, but... Um... You know, he can run the ball a little bit. It's not like he's completely terrible at it, but I think his pass catching is probably what's going to, to help him, you know, uh, make his hay in the NFL, gets what's blocked for him, you know, stuff like that. Like, I don't think he's a completely terrible player. I, I do like him a little bit, but um, probably going to be fourth, fifth, sixth round pick. You know, wouldn't shock me at that. And a lot of these guys are going to probably, you know, right. be all the same. Um, my next tier at tier three, I had Chipley leading that off. Audric Estime was uh, my next one from Notre Dame. Amani Bailey from TCU. And then Daywan Edwards um, from Georgia is my tier three. And your tier three, you have Kamani Vidal, Isaac Garendo, and Tyrone Tracy. So obviously two of the um, big um combine winners there and Garendo and Tracy go ahead and uh, talk about anybody from your tier three you want this is uh this is my interesting tier the guys that I really want to move higher and it's just going to be a matter of when you dive into the tape on them does it match up all like you said all three of them were combine winners Kamani Vidal came in and tested really well for yeah, what we were expecting did. and that's a guy who has produced very very well throughout and I'll be at Troy so people yeah. knock the competition a little bit, but it is a it is a Division One school. So <laughs> Kamani Vidal was very impressive. This is a guy that uh, Thor and Debro love. I'm starting to love him more and more. Uh, Garendo is a guy that I mentioned beforehand, um, and then he came out and absolutely just fucking destroyed the combine. Now his tape is kind of hit or miss. Okay, you watch some of it and you're like, okay, Kenny and Wangu, <laughs> and then you watch it. Sometimes you go, I see a little something here. Like, I see a little something here. Uh, the explosion does show up on tape. So I guess we're going to talk about Jalen Wright. As, as far as, like, guys in the know, there's not many other running backs outside of Jalen Wright where you go, this guy is fucking explosive, and you watch it on tape. He is explosive. Now, creative runner, cutting ability, that kind of stuff is going to come into question. But he's also very, very young in his workload career. Being behind a Jonathan Taylor, obviously being unseated by Braylon Allen as a 17-year-old freshman. For whatever reason, Louisville didn't really want to use him a whole lot until down the stretch. And then, like, you watch, like, the USC game and you go, holy shit, like, why the fuck wasn't this guy getting more runs? So uh, it's going to be a guy that I'm going to have to dig into a lot more. And then Tyrone Tracy is just my uh, forbidden fruit pleasure. The right. fucking former Iowa guy, played wide receiver, transferred to Purdue, came in, destroyed the combine. He, he switched to running back two years ago. He's done nothing pro but produce <laughs> when they give him the workload. So kind of my uh, my new Antonio Gibson. <laughs> this, okay. this is my new Antonio Gibson, and a lot of things match up, right? The the workout metrics, the switch from receiver to running back at the, the NFL is the next level. I love Tyrone Tracy, man. Yards after contact per attempt, you want to talk about that being one of my favorite running back stats? He, he was the best in the entire draft class the best 4.44 yeah. 4. 4 yards after contact per attempt nice. that is fucking ridiculous <laughs> yeah it, it really is yeah Tra tracy is a guy like when i first watched i was like yes yeah, it's, it's okay but after his testing and kind of seeing him at the combine workout i, I definitely moved him up um quite a bit from where i did have him so i, I am interested in him Garendo is the guy that, um, for me, you mentioned earlier about these athletic freaks, and then they're they're just fuck all as a player. Right. Th this is the guy for me. Like, I seriously had him like in the thirties for where when I finished my rankings, I have thirty eight running back prospects listed. He was in my thirties. 
Um, then he had this combine. I'm like, all right, what did I fucking miss on this guy? It was I watched um, some highlights on him from last year, and I'm like, this is the most boring fucking shit I've ever watched in my life. Like, I wanted to claw my fucking eyes out. Like, I just, I don't see anything with this guy, really. And he ran for, I don't even think he ran for 100 yards, or um, 100 yards, 1,000 yards last year. I'm trying to find, uh, here he is. Yeah, 810 last year. 810. Obviously, um, he was with Jawar Jordan as well, so he wasn't, didn't have the full uh, gambit there of, of the role, but just watching him like I didn't see any of this athletic testing like on field like yeah he showed some burst here and there his size and strength showed up a little bit here and there but it wasn't like blow you out the fucking doors like this is an athletic freak this is Jonathan Taylor this is Brees Hall like I never seen any of that and this guy could never get a starting job obviously Braylon Allen was at Wisconsin but he couldn't like, get on the field more there. And then he goes to Louisville, and he's with Jawar Jordan, who was fucking dog shit at the Combine, and he was splitting time with him, too. Like, there's just something that's not adding up here for Garendo for me. So, yeah, he might be this freak athlete and all that. I just I don't see it for me personally. I moved him up the rankings just because of the athletic t- testing. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this guy's fucking Isaiah Pacheco, the next – you know, coming of him or something like that as uh, just a freak athlete that uh, tested really well and maybe didn't really perform great in college. But when he gets to the next level, he could be really good. But I'm not banking on it. And I think all these people that are, are loving Garendo, I, I would just pump the brakes a little bit. Like, yeah, he I could be wrong. You know, I've, I've been wrong before, but I just personally didn't see it with Garendo for me. So the 800 yards probably saved it a lot, right? Like if he only had two, 300 yards, never really got on the field. Towards the end of the season of Louisville, right, if you go put on the tape when he's getting workload, you're yeah. like, okay. Like you can you can kind of see it. That's probably my biggest, biggest one going back. Uh, seventh in the country in this class in yards after contact per attempt too. Like this is a guy who doesn't go down easily. And at least yeah. on his tape that I've seen so far, like it shows up, right? The athletic isn't just a fugas. Right, it's not fake. Uh, some of these guys come in and they test elite, but they never really show it on the field too. Like right. you never see that stuff. So he does show it at least on the field. Now, I still have a soft spot in my heart for Isaac Garendo, but I kind of feel like tier three where he is, we're in the the tens. You know, in this shitty running back class, it kind of feels like the right play for. Mm-hmm. See what an NFL team does. Maybe they'll surprise me. Maybe he's a you know round four guy. And he goes yeah. to a situation where he's coming in as the number two or number three. And you're like, I see a path, possibly. You know, coach him up a little bit. Maybe we got something here. Mm-hmm. Um, the other one from my tier three that I did want to mention before we move on, Amani Bailey from TCU. I haven't really heard too many people talk about him. Uh, but when I watched him, man, like he is a uh, tough back, incredible footwork. He, he can always find the cutback lanes. And he is explosive. Like he's not he's maybe a step or half a step behind like a Jalen Wright in explosiveness. Uh, but for me, when I, when I watched the Monty Bailey on uh tape, man, I, I loved his explosiveness. Like, I think he could be really good in the, like that, those wide zone schemes, you know, a shotgun based offense where he can run from there. Um, I really liked what I saw from Bailey. Uh, he's only one year starter the last year at TCU, obviously after D Mercado, Kendry Miller left, um, you know, those guys were eating it up the last couple of years, but he stuck around, got his shot this last year, ran for 1,209 yards, eight touchdowns, 25 catches, 185 yards. Um, so he can, you know, catch the ball a little bit here too, but that's a guy, if he gets in the right scheme, if, you know, he goes to a 49ers, he goes to a Dolphins, I'm definitely going to be interested, um, in Amani Bailey. Cause I think he's got the home run speed, kind of like a Jalen Wright, um, that nobody's really talking about. So I liked him a lot. My biggest issue was size, and then he was slow. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the, he's 5'7 or 5'8, whatever the hell he was. We we mentioned Devin Singletary a lot on this one, but yeah. talk talk about a spitting yeah. image right there between the two. Right, right. Yeah, I could see that too. So uh, Which, which hey. is the tough eval, right? But that's a guy too. Like I don't currently have ranked, but it's just because there's a ton of running backs in here right. where it's like – you, you hit it off at the start, Eric, right? If you said, yeah, I had Omani Bailey in my top 10, I would be like, okay, yeah, I get it. Right, yeah. I mean, that's exactly. a guy for me that I don't rank at all, but fuck, I can see it, you know? Yeah, 
doesn't really and, matter to me. Yeah, and you know we we've been shitting on Devin Singletary in this episode, but guess what? Devin Singletary was a fantasy asset at points like right. best ball, lineup leagues, whatever it is. He's an asset. You probably started him at some point in your league, so like it's not bad to be a Devin Singletary. Um, you know, in this class. And like you said, there's a bunch of them. Uh, there's so many more running backs in here, but I'm just going to give you the floor, maybe mention one or two other ones that you want to mention and talk about that you like from this class. And I'll do the same and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up. Yeah. It's probably my last, like guys, I'm super like kind of just torn on, don't really know what to do with, but I like them for various reasons. Uh, Dylan Johnson, his film at Washington is very good. Uh, just a solid back gets what's there. Uh, has a little bit of creativeness to his game. I really like him, even though he's unsexy because, you know, knee injuries and yeah, bouncing around I, and I, late Xbox breakout. Xbox mentioned uh, Jamal Williams as a comp. I like that comp. That's not bad at all. Uh, Dylan Lobby, obvi- obviously the New Hampshire kid, is kind of interesting because of the pass catching. Uh, we'll see how the small school stuff kind of translates. Uh, Audric Estime was a guy that I was in love with before we went into the combine, and the 472 yeah. just was like, fuck, why? Yeah. Why, like if you're if you're His... if you're preparing for the combine, right, in your Audric estimate, and they're giving you the hand times, and it's like four six nine on a hand time, you just go like, <laughs> nah, like my hammy don't feel too good. Like, yeah, I'm it's not, kind of like I'm uh, gonna be the Elijah mystery. Holyfield uh, did yes. that a couple years ago. Yeah, that one just pissed me off. But you love the power that he runs with on tape, and he's built like a fucking brick shit house. Yeah, man. he looks like he looked like you know, obviously with the Notre Dame helmet on, he looked like a. Uh, not as uh, athletic version of Jerome Bettis, you know? right? Right, and like he, I, I'm still interested in him. Like I think yes. he can play, but like I'm not gonna double ding him because I knew he wasn't gonna fucking run a four four. Like I knew it. Correct. Like, I, I expected him to be in the four sixes. Like it's kind of what I expected. Like he doesn't have long speed. But he has really good fucking burst, and he's gonna fucking bang it in there. Like he's like a fucking TJ Duckett almost. You know, one like of the saving graces class. for him was the RAS score turned out okay. Yeah. In the end, because of the size and the other athletic testing he does, so like maybe this guy just sucks at running the forty. <laughs> like that's yeah. kind of the. It's one of the things I'm just holding on to. Like maybe the NFL don't care, but I, I kind of imagine if you run in the four sevens, they give a shit. <laughs> like yeah, this. like. A- I'm expecting him to be a fifth, sixth, seventh round pick. Maybe he goes to the fucking Ravens, you know, back up Derrick Henry, and he could be, you know, kind of like a Derrick Henry backup, you know, a Gus Edwards, basically. Like, I think Estime could easily do that. And somebody I'm, I'm interested in in fantasy for sure. So that's a good call. And uh, Isaiah Davis, last one out yeah, of that group. Davis, yeah, that South Dakota too. State guy, right? Yeah. Kind of interested to see what happens with him. So everybody else, it's just like, when I got to sit down and do rank Frank Gore, Cody Schrader, Milton, McClellan, Rasheen Ali, it's just like, eh, I don't really give a fuck. But, you know, if the NFL tells me they give a fuck or they go to an interesting situation, obviously this will change. Yeah. No, I, I liked Isaiah Davis, too. That was another good one. Uh, just a couple of the guys that I want to point out that I like. Um, I've, I've heard his name on a couple of smarter podcasts, Blake Watson from Memphis. He is kind of just like one of these Memphis guys that have come out, Antonio Gibson, Tony Pollard, Kenny Gainwell. He's kind of just like one of those guys. And I haven't seen too many people talk about Blake Watson, but when I watched him, I was really impressed with him. So I like him a lot. Keelan Robinson, also from Texas. He didn't get a lot of love either, but, um, combine, he was really good. Really good pass catcher. I think he's going to be somebody that's going to be able to find a role in the NFL and be pretty good. Probably going to be, you know, uh, a special teams guy and, you know, be the third down back. Like, I can see that role for Keelan Robinson in the NFL. And then um, the last one that I really liked, um, I want to mention, was Cody Schrader as well. Um, That dude's... uh, just he, he's gonna go get go get that first down like he, that dude's got all the heart in the world so i i really like cody schrader um saw some you know it sucked that he didn't get to really comp- um, complete the combine he did get hurt i think he hurt his uh, hamstring or thigh or something um in the 40 but cody schrader's a, uh, another guy that i i really liked um the sec guy i think he was the leading rusher in the sec this year um uh, after a transfer so yep. yeah that's came out of nowhere to do that too right 
Yeah. Wasn't on a lot of people's radars. Maybe the yeah. the C two C guys, you know, right, they fucking right. find everything, right? They know that shit before it even happens. I'm like, who the fuck are you talking about, man? I've never heard of this <laughs> in my life. Right. Absolutely. But uh, no, that's our uh, our running back prospect talk. Obviously, um, if you want to sign up over on the Patreon for South Harmon, sign up there. You can get things to eight dollar tier. You get to um, look at our shit fantasy rankings. Uh, myself on there, Adam, Mike, Koopa, Christian, Barry's on there. Barry's been doing some incredible work with his prospects stuff, his prospect grades, Devi grades. He's been working on too. Um, so you can get access to those tiers as well. Barry's been doing some great stuff. Just shout out to Barry on all the stuff he's been doing. Um, and you can check out all our ranks here. Um, I'm updating them daily. Uh, even these free agents, you know, I'm changing the team that they're going to. I'll start updating my own ranks, uh, here when I get some time, move these, uh, free agent guys up and down where I need to. Um, so yeah, I mean, these, these ranks are going to be always updated for you guys. You guys can check them out, use them for your startup drafts that you're ultimately going to be doing here soon. Um, you know, we have some big stuff planned here for the draft coming up as well. We'll probably announce those here in the next couple of weeks or so once we get that all sorted out. But, yeah, we're going to have some really good um, stuff coming for you guys uh, for the draft this year. So excited for that. Yeah. Uh, but with and that, it's a, if, oh, well, it's a, it's a good time, too, to talk about Rookie Warp just got put in. We're also oh, yeah, running yeah. a sale on all things Warp considered, right? Just go to the website. It's right at the top. It gives you a promo code, even a clickable link. But rookie warp, right? What are these running backs actually worth? What is a second round pick historically? Like if you get the 24th best rookie in the class, what is that actually worth in terms of warp over the first two years? So perfect time to check that out as well with your uh, rookie drafts coming up here. Absolutely. Yep. Sign up for that, for the warp tool there uh, that Cooper provides us on the South Harmon FF.com website. Um, great tool for startups as well. You know, see what the, um, the warp says what you should be rostering in your leagues. What are the most important values for your settings for your leagues? And you can obviously start drafting towards that setup and you're probably going to have pretty good success. Um, if you keep up with it, draft the right players for that, um, for those settings. But, uh, yeah, America's favorite game. You ready? Let's go, man. I've been waiting. It feels like a month and a half for this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I haven't had you on in a while. And uh, obviously, it's running back month, so I got to get your your takes on this, man. Who's your favorite running back all time? Running back currently, give us give us your running backs, man. Man, I had some some real faves, right? Being an Eagles fan, Brian Westbrook's always gonna yeah. hold a dear place in my heart, man. Fucking always. walking eggplant emoji right there. I love Brian Westbrook to death. Oh, me too. <laughs> yep. Uh, some of my favorites, though, uh, obviously the LT years were amazing. You know, yeah, kids these days cool. don't know. You know, they talk about the Christian McCaffrey man, but LT was him there for. <laughs> yeah. Whoever drafted LT for a number of years was the guy who won your fantasy football. <laughs> it's just kind of how it goes. But we had that heyday, man. Uh, some of my favorites back in the day. Larry Johnson was a fucking tank for Kansas City. Yeah, for like two years until they ran him in the fucking ground. They did. They killed him, but those were magical two years. Loved him. Yep. Uh, obviously, the Adrian Peterson years were awesome. Uh, he played oh, for the yeah. Vikings, though, so it's kind of like, a, I don't really give a fuck. I don't really like <laughs> local teams around here, man. <laughs> um, Brian Westbrook stood out. Uh, the Priest home years were fun in oh, Kansas yeah. City. Uh, but I've always been a big fan of, I got a type. I got an archetype, right? And Audric Estime falls into that one. I love the kind of fat running backs, the tanks, right? So I'm going to throw one way back for you. Natron Means was my favorite oh, running back. Yeah. That was one of my favorite names as a kid. Like, Oh, Natron Means Business. Him. Yeah. Yeah, and Berman would always come up with good names for it, so that made it fun. But it's like Natron. Like, it's a fucking sweet name. Like, I ne you never heard anybody with that name before until I started watching the NFL as a kid. And... Yeah, that, that's definitely one for sure. Dude, I, I loved it, too, because he had the swag, too. Even back in the day, he had the blacked-out yeah. visor, and he was yeah. just a fucking rocked-up bowling ball. But Jerome Bettis falls into that category. If you, you want to go back... Like a, uh, you seem like you'd, you would have been a Michael Turner guy from the Falcons. <laughs> The problem with Michael Turner was everybody got on on Turner the Burner. Yeah. <laughs> but like, for a big the, guy, that guy could fucking move. He could fucking move, right? Uh, yeah. Before that, though, long before that, Krishna Koya of the Chiefs, oh, the yeah, Nigerian yeah. nightmare man. Beast. Yeah. 
So him and Earl Campbell, at least historically, if we want to go way back in time, people talk about Walter Payton as their favorite, Eric Dickerson, maybe like that. Yeah, yeah, those kind for me growing up as a little kid, man, uh, just watching the highlights that they used to play of uh, of, uh, Campbell and Christian Okoye, I was like, that's kind of running back. I want to be what I grow up, just this fucking giant, just hammer. (laughs) Come get me, boys. I was always appreciative of all the styles. So, like, I love Barry Sanders and his shiftiness sure. and speed, but I also loved Emmett Smith and like just he was great. Fucking Thurman Thomas was awesome. Marcus Allen was always fun to watch. Um, you know, like I talked about Ohio State, I fucking loved Eddie George. That was probably my favorite running back of all time. Is Eddie George? Um, that dude was a fucking beast and a half, built like a Greek god. Uh, god, there are just so many running backs, but like those big bowling ball types, man. That you mentioned, like uh, Jerome Bettis was was always fun to watch, even though he was on the damn Steelers. But he was just fun to watch. Um, then they always had um, the Steelers always had those like bigger running backs, like the er, like mid nineties Bam Bam Morris. He was one of the ones that was always like that. They had um, Chris Fuamatu Malafala. That was like the early two thousands when he came around. Uh, that was another uh, decent one that they had. There, man, there's just so many of those like bigger bowling ball types. Um, one of my favorite runs of all time is uh, when the Browns got into the playoffs in 2001, um, and William Green busted off a big one against the Falcons. It was at home um, to win the game, basically. Well, it was to get go take the lead, and then the Falcons came back down um, and got. Sh- shut down on fourth down but William Green was the one who who broke the big run for it so I always kind of uh, appreciated William Green even though he never really hit big like we thought he was going to um but yeah man there's so many freaking running backs in the league um I've talked about him on a couple of the past episodes so I'm not going to go on too much longer but uh no I just wanted to kind of get um uh some of your favorite running backs some of my favorite fantasy running backs uh Maurice Jones Drew I was in on him yeah. You know, in our home league before anybody else was his rookie year. So I really liked him coming out. And then another one that sticks, it was Jamal Lewis, but with the Browns. Uh, I remember okay. specifically I traded, uh, I was playing my stepdad that week. And the week before I traded for Jamal Lewis when he was on the Browns. And I don't remember that it wasn't the NFL like r- rushing record at the time that he set, but he went for like 200 and some fucking yards one time when he was yeah, playing for the Browns. The Browns. Oh, no, yeah, it was Browns. on the Browns. Yeah, yeah when, he, when he went um, for it. I know which game you're talking about. I don't forget who was against them. But it was just such a like I traded for him the week I was playing my stepdad and <laughs> Just, he was like, what the yeah. fuck? Like, yeah. Jamal Lewis went for 200 some yards that week. It was like, yeah, got yeah. got one right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like I said, I, I, I just loved all those, all kinds of backs, big backs, shifty backs. LaShawn McCoy was fun to watch. Barry Sanders, yeah. you know, those types. Um, yeah, there, there's just been so many. We could go on for days and days on that, but um, college running back though, 101 for me, Reggie your favorite Bush. favorite Iowa running back of all time. Well, yeah, Sean Green's always going to hold a special Sean place, Green, yeah. right? Especially going from moving furniture. If you if you're not aware of the story, like he played for Iowa, got kicked off, you know, went to community college, and he was moving furniture, and then they brought him back, and then he went on to you know win the Doak Walker, <laughs> yeah. go to the Jets, played, and he was good on the Jets. Yeah, he was really good on the Jets when they were in the midst of those AFC championship runs. So Sean Green is special. I was a huge Akram Wadley fan. Uh, never okay. turned out to be shit in the NFL. Obviously, Tyler Goodson holds a special place in my heart, but I'll throw one back to the deep Iowa fans if you're out there. Marcus Coker, and we talk about oh, giant bowling ball fucking running backs. That was the dude. Now, him and Kirk Ferentz butted heads after he, you know, just absolutely went off one year. <laughs> so, <laughs> never was, but Marcus Coker. Yeah, I'm looking at um, just some uh, of the best... Uh... Iowa running backs of all time. Cedric See, Shaw is going to be up there. Tavian yeah. Banks is going to be up there. Uh, Liddell Betts, he played for the Reds. I was never Washington. a big fan of him. It's probably because he wore uh, like 46, and it's just such an yeah. unsexy run. Like, Sexy fuck, number. stop wearing Alvin Kamara is the only dude that can make like 40s for running back sexy. Right, yep. Um, I give it to Mike Allstott too, but he was a fullback, so you can wear a 40. 
I remember Albert Young because that was the one I was watching big time yeah, a lot. He got hurt a billion times, man. I think yeah. you want to talk about Tajay Spears before Tajay Spears. I'm surprised he had any ACLs left at the end of his career. Oh, right, right. I, I mean, he's not high in this list for whatever reason. I mean, maybe it was a, a later list, but I, I, I like Tyler Goodson. I think I thought he was good right. Too. We had a special year too with two freshman running backs, Brandon Wagger, which always. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the other guy. He wore 32. Neither one of them did shit in the NFL, and they ended up both transferring, but they were both special as true freshmen, split in the backfield. Iowa went on to have a fantastic season, and then they both just disappeared into the abyss, and we could never really figure out why. Uh, it yeah. turned out Brandon Wager was fucking the other guy's sister, got her pregnant, and then bailed. So, nice. yeah, that's a good way to split up a locker room. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I'm going to knock up my teammate's sister and then bounce, you know. <laughs> And it, it turned out, no offense, Brandon Wagner, but no no matter where he went, I think he might have gone to Nebraska or something after that. He had problems there. He got a teammate's girlfriend pregnant. You know, he was like a, he was like Antonio Cromartie. Basically, yeah, just <laughs> couldn't fucking pull out of the driveway. No. <laughs> no. No, man. Like, what are you doing, man? Come on. <laughs> Use some prophylactics, son. Right, right. <laughs> Too funny. Uh, but all right, with that, uh, we're going to wrap it up here. Appreciate you coming on, Mike, as always, man. Always, always good to buddy. have you on here. Um, check out SouthHarmonFF.com. Find the warp tool. Find the lab on there. The lab is free to use for your sleeper leagues. Go ahead, check that out. Uh, like I said, we're going to have some draft stuff coming up here, some announcements shortly. Um, yeah, all kinds of good shit going on, man. Check out the Patreon, all that. Uh, Mondays, you got the mock drafts on YouTube. Those have been going fun. Uh, DynastyTeamReview.com, if you need some team reviews done, those have been going great as well. Uh, sign up for one of those if you need a team review. And uh, But with that, we're going to close out the America's Game episode number 33 for this week. Appreciate you. Uh, at Eric Vanek NFL on Twitter for me. At Iowa Michael for Mike on Twitter. Uh, follow us there. And the show at America's Game Pod as well there. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Uh, I believe it is going to be Fizzle, I think, is going to be next week. We're going to look at some mock drafts. Yeah. Look at some mock drafts. Look uh, at some more running back stuff here. Um, yeah, it's going to be a good one. So I'm looking forward to that. So I appreciate you guys. We'll see you next week. See you.